County Cork was the most active county in Ireland during the War of Independence. The largest ambush of the war took place in West Cork, near the village of Kilmichael. The Auxiliaries, or Ogsies for short, had 150 men stationed in nearby Macroom. They were described as the most ruthless force that occupied Ireland, and General Tom Barry, the commander of the 3rd West Cork Flying Column, decided to intervene to prevent the area being terrorised even more. He led the ambush, and we hear from Con O'Callaghan at the ambush site in Kilmichael. So I'm joined by Con O'Callaghan and we're here at the Kilmichael ambush. Con, you might talk us through what happened on the night of the 28th of November 1920. Well, the column had been training in Ahelnan, which is north of Inneskeen, and they left there in the dead of night and proceeded to the ambush point here and they arrived here at about a quarter past eight. And by nine o'clock, all the men were in their positions. They didn't know what time the Augsies were coming, so they had to be ready from an early stage. And the positions were, way down in the distance was the command post where you can see a low plaque on the side of the road. And just at this side of that, on the left, was number one position and Number two section was here behind me, behind the monument. And number three section was in two parts. Part of it was across the road to prevent the Augsies from getting cover at that side of the road if they so did. And the second part of that section was at the extreme northern end to prevent a third lorry from come attacking if it happened to come. And they were there all day until four o'clock that evening and the signal came that the lorries were coming and the men got into position and as the lorry rounded the corner here Tom Barry stepped out with a military uniform and the lorry slowed down because they wouldn't have seen this type of uniform and as the lorry slowed down Sonny Dave Crowley who was a great marksman picked out the driver and shot him and at that stage, Tom Barry threw a Mills bomb into the lorry and that killed the passenger and the driver completely. And in a very short time, that lorry was dealt with. All the occupants were killed. And then Tom Barry and two or three others proceeded up the dike to help number two section who were having a stiff fight from the second lorry. And as they were coming up the road, Tom Barry could hear the Augsies saying, we surrender, and saw them putting down their rifles. And no sooner had they put down the rifles when a couple of the volunteers stood up to accept the surrender. And at that stage, the Augsies produced their revolvers and shot two of Tom Barry's men. And then Tom Barry told the number two section to keep firing until they got the order. And he took no others surrender from those men and waited until they were all killed and there were 16 killed and one survived even though they thought he was killed and another chap escaped north towards McCrew and Tom Barry had three casualties. Jim O'Sullivan died over there, there's a little cross mark in the spot and Michael McCarthy and Pat Deasy work here in number two section. Michael McCarthy was just to the left of the monument and Pat Deasy was behind the monument. And when the fight was over, the men gathered up the rifles and am ammunition that the British had and burnt the lorries. And the casualties were taken up across the road to Buttermers of Gort Row. And it was there Pat Deasy died at 10 o'clock that night. And the main body of the column then moved off back towards Granur and the bodies were taken down and buried in temporary graveyard. Very good, thank you Con, thanks a million for that. We now hear from the son of Michael Con O'Driscoll, who was one of the boys at Kilmichael. 
Connor, thanks very much for having us here to your home in Granure. You're, you're, welcome. you're welcome. Thank you. Your father was in the Kinmichael ambush. That's and he was, correct. He was from yes, here, yeah. actually. He was from this house, wasn't, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he lived out his life here in this house from birth to death, shall we say. You might tell me a little bit about your father's involvement in the ambush in Kinmichael. Uh, um, he... he and, uh, uh, Balna Carriga down the road was a, a company of um, volunteers and he was one of uh, four or five from the Balna Carriga company who were involved in this um, flying column that were in, in the engagement in Kilmichael. Uh, I'm not sure how long they were uh, together but I'd said it's only been a matter of days anyway. At the time he was 22 years of age. And did your dad tell you much about what happened? No, he spoke uh, not much, very little about it. He, you know, oh, he always said he was there like and you know we were the boys of Kill Michael kind of and uh, that uh, the only few things I remember him saying were about it. They gathered in this place in Ahelnan the night before the ambush, which is a couple of miles from Inniskeen. And uh, uh, there, um, maybe less than, you know. And uh, they were made it from there then to the Kilmichael in the morning. But on the night before the ambush, um, the palace priest in Inniskeen, Kenan O'Connell, arrived up to them with his saddle horse, his transport, had a talk with them and heard their confessions and many of them wanted to go. <laughs> and that was it. Yeah. We now hear from another descendant, Mick O'Brien, whose father Paddy O'Brien was one of the boys of Kilmichael. So we're here in Ballinacarraga in Mick O'Brien's garden and Mick, your father, was in the ambush in Kilmichael, Patrick O'Brien. You might tell us a little bit about what you remember that he told you of the ambush. Yes, he, he, he told us quite a lot. Like if we had listened a little more, maybe we'd have, have, have known more about it. But um, it, was, it was a very private affair, if, if, like the... the to keep it f from circling the area, they um, didn't they didn't show themselves too much. He said it was ferocious while well, it lasted. Mm. You know, it was pretty gr grim. But anyway, that's war, I suppose. And afterwards, then the the mass up and down the road to get the the troubles out of their mind a little before they tidied up the place and whatever ammunition was there, they brought it with them. And you have an earlier picture of your father here as well. Oh, that was when he, when he done the, the uniform. Yeah. Well, Tom Barry wore that at the ambush. This particular uniform yes. that your father's wearing? Yes. Wow, Yeah. really? Well, there was only one, one of them, one of them uh, available, we say. Right. <laughs> Con, we're in Castletown, Kenna, at the graveyard where some of the, the volunteers were buried. You might tell us who, who they are. Well, on the extreme right, as we look at it, is Michael McCarthy from Dunmanway. Pat DC from Kilmac Simon is next. And Jim O'Sullivan from Conacawadra Ross Moore is next. The three of those were killed at Kilmichael. And here we have Jeremiah O'Mahony, who took part in the ambush at Kilmichael and was killed a half year later and is buried here with the Kilmichael victims. The three Kilmichael victims were buried in temporary graves over near the site of the ambush and were brought here when things were sorted out and the Canon O'Connell who heard their confessions on the night before the ambush was here to receive their remains the week after. Very good. Thanks, Con. 
The Boys of Kilmichael are commemorated every year at the Ambush site on the last Sunday of November. While we honour in song and in story the deeds of our patriot men whose valour hath covered in glory full many's the mountain and lin. Forget not the boys of Kilmichael, those brave lads so gallant and true, who fought neath the green flag of Erin and conquered the red, white, and blue. On the twentieth day of November, the tans left the town of Macroom. They were seated in two crosley tenders, which led them right into their doom. They were on the road to kill Michael, and never expected a stall, till they were met with the men of the column, who made a clean sweep of them all. So here's to the boys of Kilmichael, they feared not the might of the foe. For the day that they marched into battle was the day that the tans were laid low. So here's to the boys of Kilmichael, who feared not the might of the foe. They fought on the great Tommy Barry and conquered the red, white, and blue.